What's going on, YouTube fam? It's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. Before I start, be sure to tap that like button. Definitely watch this video to the end to hear the full story. Subscribe if you're new to the fam. Hit that notification bell for future uploads. This is a requested video from one of the fam members. Let's get right into it. In certain environments, talking to police is a no-no. Even if it's just simple conversation. Some people feel like it's no reason for communication between people in their community and time out, as we say in Baltimore. Or some might say 12. Now granted, someone might be stopped and questioned in which they have no control of. But in certain hoods, someone might walk by to make sure you are not giving up information or pay a kid on a bike to get close to listening. I understand the politics, especially if you live in a community where Time Out has been doing things to people for decades, wrongful arrests and convictions, which makes it hard to trust them, and which it creates a us versus them kind of thing. But just because a person is questioned doesn't mean they gave information. And on this episode of Hood Tales, we will take it to Tulsa, Oklahoma to discuss a case that was said to be one of the most violent in Oklahoma's history. Back in 2016, a 23-year-old man named Courtney Palmer was in the Tamarack Place Apartments in the 61st Street and Peoria Avenue area of Tulsa, in which a friend of Courtney named Carl Harris, or nicknamed Duke, got into an altercation with another individual, and shots were fired, hit and called. Courtney was in close range and saw the whole thing unfold, and as residents came outside to see what was going on, also TPD pulled up to investigate. Allegedly, they tried talking to Courtney, but they quickly assumed he was under the influence because of the way he was acting. So police decided to talk to him another day. As some in the community, which had a strong gang presence of Hoover Crips, looked at Courtney as setting up call, the man who was shot, and talking to police or giving up information. Two people decided to take matters into their own hands. At the time, 41-year-old Gerald Keith Lowe and 27-year-old Michaela Riddle, rumors were going around the neighborhood about Courtney planning to cooperate with police. And as Tulsa PD came back to interview the man, he wasn't nowhere to be found, leading to a missing persons investigation that would take a turn. So now the narrative was what happened to Courtney. Allegedly, a few days after the shooting of his friend, Mr. Lowe and Ms. Riddle decided to bait Courtney in through other associates they were all cool with. A lady named Miss Mack allowed the couple to bring Courtney to her home in a 4600 block of North Boston place. Also, a young lady named Miss Thomas, who was just 19, was at the home. Courtney had a child with Miss Mack's niece, so he didn't think anything of it or thought he wasn't in harm's way. But in the home, this is where things get crazy. Mr. Lowe and Miss Riddle confronted Courtney about setting up Duke and talking to police, in which he denied both allegations. But the couple wasn't buying it. Before they attacked Courtney and started beating him as he fell, choking him, stomping him, putting plastic over his face, even pouring boiling hot water on the young man. As he pleaded, once Miss Mack realized what was going on, she questioned the couple, asking was everything okay? In which they responded, don't worry about it, before taking Courtney and putting him in the bathroom. At that point, Mr. Lowe instructed Miss Riddle, his girlfriend, and the young lady, Miss Thomas, to go get ice from the gas station. As they got back, Miss Thomas later testified, we had four bags of ice, and I saw Courtney in the bathtub, badly beaten. But she didn't know how serious it was, before hearing Miss Riddle yelling out, he got me effed up, and he ain't Hoover before continuing the situation. After seeing Courtney bleeding, the young lady fled to another room in the house, but later saw Courtney laying in the hallway unresponsive with plastic over his body. As police still in the blind at this time got a tip that Mr. Lowe was spotted at the Northwest Center of 74th Street West in Oklahoma 62 in a whole nother county. Authorities who already speculated Courtney was gone went to the area where a burnt mattress was covering a shallow grave in which remains that were badly decomposed was found. Also a sock and other items in the nearby vacant house. 
As the body was sent to medical examiners, it was determined to be Courtney's ponder. As results came back, it included the man had broken facial bones and ribs. A picture started unfolding. Also, the sock found at the scene had Mr. Lowe's and Mrs. Riddle's DNA on it. As TPD started to question people in the community, even questioning Duke, the mutual friend of everyone that was shot, but he survived. It was in the hospital six weeks. He told detectives, I don't think Courtney set me up. We were cool. Police focused on the homeowner, Miss Mack, and the young lady, Miss Thomas, accusing Miss Mack of allowing everything to happen in her home and not calling police. Wanting justice for Courtney, she would describe a horrific scene of six hours of beating and other things. It was even speculated that the mattress that was burnt was used by the couple to have intercourse while Courtney's body was still in the room. With motive and statements, Mr. Lowe and Ms. Riddle were picked up and charged with kidnapping, murder, throwing things to a corpse, gang offenses, and torture. Eventually, 19-year-old Ms. Thomas was acquitted and used as a witness. Ms. Mack, who was charged with accessory to murder, were bailed out. As for Mr. Lowe and Ms. Riddle, they both were found guilty. Mr. Lowe was sentenced to a life sentence. Ms. Riddle was found guilty on lesser charges of second degree and sentenced to 49 years in prison. Rest in peace, Courtney Palmer. I send my prayers and condolences to the family. More of this story, Courtney was hit because of speculation. Come to find out, he never gave a statement or set up Duke. So all this was for nothing. Don't try to follow the street code so much that you really are following it wrong and putting things out on people that could cause them their lives or you, your freedom. So remember, we got to succeed not to fail. So we won't be just another hood to, man, crazy story. You know what I mean? Rest in peace to Courtney, man. That's crazy. I know y'all probably seen this on First 48. Like I said, this requested video, you know, at the time they were saying this was one of Tulsa's most serious like crimes. They were saying like the lengths they went to to make sure this young man disappeared. And then they come to find out when they talked to the man who got hit up in the apartment complex, he said he don't feel like Courtney was trying to set him up and he don't feel like Courtney was cooperating. You know, he never said what he saw. He never told police nothing. So everything was speculation. And when they talked to him when he was at the house and they tried to ask him, he told these two like, man, I ain't say nothing. I ain't set nobody up, man. But they went with they move anyway, you feel me? Yeah, she ended up getting like 40 something years. He ended up getting life in prison, man. But this young man lost his life. You feel me? So at the end of the day, man, you got to watch that kind of energy you put out on people. You feel me? You trying to say somebody did something or somebody said something and that wasn't the case. And it caused for a whole situation. You feel me? Fortunately, the young lady who was at the house, she got acquitted because she really ain't do nothing. You feel me? She probably was scared. She went and got some ice. The lady who house it was, Miss Matt, I'm not sure what happened to her. I never found any information. But yeah, man, let me know what y'all think about this one. I appreciate you if you made it to the end. Love, fam. I'm out. Oh.